Dear friends, welcome to the Eastern Front channel. Today we will dive into the memories of the killed Lieutenant Gerhard Link in the area of the unknown Smolensk village of Oshchepkovo. In this video I will show on the Google map the advance and retreat of the German army in accordance with the diary of the murdered lieutenant. We will trace his path near Moscow to his last destination where he found eternal rest in Mother Russia. In his diary, he willingly shared his thoughts about why there was such a difficult situation near Moscow. Perhaps it is the memories of Lieutenant Link that will shed light on the reasons for the defeat of the Germans near Moscow in the winter of 1941. The 87th Infantry Division, which included the 185th Infantry Regiment, belonged to the second wave divisions of the Wehrmacht, formed according to the mobilization plan of 1939-1940. They had a large number of career officers with World War I experience who had served in the Reichswehr for many years. In terms of their staffing and equipment, they almost did not differ from the very first infantry divisions of the Wehrmacht. The regiments of the division participated in the 1940 campaign in the West, they had serious combat experience. Despite the serious losses suffered in the winter campaign of 1941-1942, about which Link writes in detail in his diary, the division retained its combat potential and fought on the Eastern Front throughout the war, capitulating only in the Courland Cauldron after the fall of Berlin. It should be clarified that during the November German offensive on Moscow, the 87th Infantry Division fought at the junction of the Soviet 16th and 5th Armies and penetrated into the depths of the Soviet defense in the Zvenigorod direction, perhaps the furthest, reaching the bank of the Moskva River east of Zvenigorod. There is almost no mention of civilians in the diary, although its author constantly wrote something down about villages where the regiment's headquarters were located. They just didn't seem to exist for him. Recording his impressions of the battles, Link treated the Red Army soldiers more than critically, not appreciating their fighting qualities, even when his regiment was retreating. He writes much more about the shortcomings of his own army. The Wehrmacht's unpreparedness for frosts, the collapse of supplies. Russian tanks, coupled with the Stalin's organ, they arouse his sincere respect. Well, let's get down to Lieutenant Link's diary. November 15, 1941. This morning, Colonel Carson of the 461st Infantry Regiment took command of our sector of the front. We are moving to new apartments. We will rest until the offensive resumes. The whole regiment has gathered in the village. We are terribly cramped. November 16, 1941. A beautiful sunny day. The snowy landscape is fascinating. However, there is no need to think about complete rest. It is necessary to put up a combat guard so that in this area, rich in forests, we are not taken by surprise. During the day, the frost is still tolerable, but at night it is terribly cold. And each soldier carefully wraps himself in his blanket before lying down on a bed of straw. None of us has undressed since August. Twilight in this region descends by 4 o'clock, and it gets light, only at half past 6 in the morning. This morning, the enemy launched an artillery strike on the village of Red Kino. Shells fell on the outskirts of the village. One of them entered the house, killed two soldiers, and wounded many soldiers. After a two-month break, we received the long-awaited mail. It is a great joy to receive the first greetings from the motherland, since we left the defense line near Smolensk and took part in the big operation of the Vyazma encirclement. We are preparing for an offensive. We are somewhat worried about the upcoming days. If the enemy burns down a few villages, our troops will have nowhere to stay and warm up. A few frosty days were enough to cause diseases and cases of frostbite. Our fighting forces are noticeably decreasing. Winter uniforms are also a big problem. The first batch of winter uniforms arrived late and was distributed only last week. We are waiting for a new delivery. November 17, 1941 It's a fabulously beautiful morning again. The thermometer shows minus 9 Celsius. It's still not quite calm in Red Kino. The fierce roar of guns all the time from Gorbovo. November 18, 1941. The last quiet night before the offensive. The whole day passes in a continuous bustle. We go to bed for a few hours to sleep. What awaits us tomorrow? How will the unusual frost affect our progress? The day has come, we must take part in the encirclement of Moscow. It is possible that after that everything will end for us. We have high hopes for the beginning of the battle. The 3rd Battalion quickly breaks the enemy resistance at the edge of the forest. We are moving along a very bad road to Petrovo. There, according to the testimony of prisoners, field fortifications should be located. We hear the noise of the battle from the left. Soon we see German soldiers approaching the village. Immediately our battalion joins the offensive and penetrates into village Petrovo. 
The maps are so inaccurate that they are almost impossible to use. We captured many prisoners, destroyed one tank, and captured many machine guns and other weapons. We got into the hands of two anti-tank guns of a new type, which we did not know about yet, we captured them along with ammunition. Along the way, there are annoying congestion and traffic jams due to the fact that the neighboring regiment did not occupy the lane assigned to it. On the way, you have to overcome difficulties all the time. The roads are broken by vehicles, heavy carts slide down the smooth slopes. Artillery guns overcome difficult places with difficulty very slowly, despite additional harnesses with horses, both the lack of forage and the cold effect. In winter all the animals stand in the open air. November 20th, 1941. Due to the bad road, our wagons are far behind us. First of all, we have to pull up parts of the infantry column. However, the order came to continue the movement. So precious hours of daylight pass. We remain with our command post in Gornivo. A regiment with a battalion manages to occupy the villages of Iglovo and Zaviazovo with a sudden attack. Due to the unexpected opening of fire, the enemy suffered huge losses. The heavy guns of the regiment, hidden at the edge of the forest, opened fire on the advancing Red Army soldiers who intended to occupy these positions. In a small area there were more than 30 killed and 6 machine guns disabled. The Russians have heavy losses in the trenches and shelters. About 250 people were captured. Our losses are too wounded. It's hard to believe. I was uneasy all day. I think a cold was creeping up on me. The temperature outside reached minus 10 yesterday and minus 7 Celsius today. Gray clouds covered the sky and the sun. It is strange that so far Russian artillery has not fired from either the Oreshki area or the Vyschenki. Probably, the enemy has few guns and concentrates them on the main blow area. At the same time, the activity of the volley gun, which in the soldier's language is called the Stalin's organ, is increasing. We ourselves have not experienced its effects yet, but we often hear from afar the continuous roar of blows. They say that the moral effect of exploding rockets is stronger than the real action and is incomparable with our mortars. Our neighbors on the left are not fighting very well. All the time there are places that are not protected from the enemy. November 21, 1941. In the morning we go to Torkovo. Along the way, I have the opportunity to look at the field where the fight took place yesterday and take some photos. In the afternoon we have to get to the Sasunia. In Torkovo, for the first time, Soviet artillery opened disturbing fire, unfortunately, we lost several men, horses and other military supplies. During a conversation with Major General Lute, rocket shells flew in our direction. Many of them exploded in the middle of the village, everyone in the room lay down on the floor. The windows trembled from the air wave of exploding shells nearby. The window frame is broken, dirt and smoke rise in a column. Senior Lieutenant Tumler, Lieutenant Canis, and Lieutenant Muller were wounded in the house. Groans and screams of the seriously wounded can be heard on the street, the losses of the headquarters company are large. Progress through the forest is slow, first it was necessary to clear the road. Senior Sergeant Berthold, my former chief sergeant during the campaign to the west, and a Spanish soldier, die the death of heroes from shrapnel. The command is heard, watch out Soviet tanks. A heavy KV tank has already appeared on the road which was mentioned in one of the last Soviet leaflets. Our assault cannon, located in front, will not be able to do much damage to him. Fortunately, the sappers managed to blow up the tank. Suddenly, from the side, in the bushes, the same tank appeared, the brave sappers destroyed it with a thermite mine. When we reached the edge of the forest, we saw that we had lost our way. The Russian artillery hits the command post of the 3rd Battalion very accurately. There are direct hits. Along with many people from the battalion headquarters, Wild Hagen from artillery communications team was killed. I caught him in the last moments of his life. We release the Sasuniha village and occupy it. The middle regiment on the right occupies settlements at the same height. We are going back to Torkovo. Tired, we settle down in the house where the frame flew out today. The holes were plugged with boards and hay. At night, a barn caught fire, in which 85 horses of the 8th transport column were standing. The cause of the fire remained unknown, obviously sabotage took place. Most of the horses were burned. One blow, and the transport column belonging to the regiment disappeared, I do not know which loss could be harder. It is impossible to get horses without damage to other parts, you can't get the precious harness at all. We demand that an anti-aircraft squad be attached to fight tanks, since anti-tank guns are powerless against heavy tanks, and medium anti-tank guns attached can only conditionally have an effect. At dawn, the anti-aircraft squad arrives with 188mm and 220mm anti-aircraft guns. 
I accompany him to the front line, to Sasuniha village, and equipping a new regiment command post. The enemy is attacking the 173rd Infantry Regiment. Sometimes the noise of battle is heard. The 2nd and 3rd Battalions are advancing on Sermino. The 2nd Battalion moves from village Zaviazovo to Sasunia and arrives there just at the time, when a message arrives, about the enemy occupying the initial position near the village. A quick strike of a rifle company and assault guns and the enemy is defeated. 60 Russians killed, remain on the battlefield, 100 captured. Around noon, the 2nd Battalion joins the rest of the battalions ready to attack Sermino. In the area that we captured, it comes to skirmishes with enemy units thrown back to the north. Several tanks are shelling German positions. Anti-aircraft gun knocks out the T-34. The tank burst into flames. The offensive presents an inspiring picture. The whole regiment is marching in an open field from the forest to the village. Assault artillery, anti-tank guns and anti-aircraft guns help with their fire. Aptly dropped shells of assault artillery disable several anti-aircraft guns on the outskirts of the village. Suddenly, a T-34 appears from behind the houses in turns, spewing fire at the chain of our shooters. He is taken under fire by anti-tank guns of all calibers and anti-aircraft guns standing a little apart. This crazy tank turns between the soldiers and tries to crush them with his caterpillars. You can only be saved by a dexterous leap to the side. One or two soldiers die a terrible death. The steel monster's tower was apparently jammed. In any case, he shoots only from his machine gun. The projectile of a light anti-tank gun hits the exhaust pipe, fire bursts out of the tank. The engine is smoking, but the tank rushes forward at high speed. In the end, one chain jumps off the running gear, the tank is spinning in place. The next shell smashes the second caterpillar, the T-34 stops. Meanwhile, the first companies are already in the village and are pursuing the fleeing enemy with fire. Sermino is in our hands. The Istra's Venigorod Highway has been cut. Lieutenant Strabel, he stayed in Sasuniha, survived terrible hours. Strong formations of Russian infantry flooded the road connecting both battalions and threatened the village. Telephone wiring is cut in places. Those who tried to fix it are shot. Shortly after this incident, I, along with the lieutenant from 1st Division of the 187th Artillery Regiment were returning back. In one ditch we found a burning motorcycle sidecar. Two soldiers are lying in the blood-red snow. Separate disturbing artillery fire and blows of the Stalin's organ fell inaccurately, far from the village, in the field. One-third of the T-34s were destroyed from 50mm anti-tank guns on the eastern outskirts of Sermino. In the evening we always warm up and rest tired. These are hours of unforgettable, refreshing slumber. It is necessary that one of the staff officers should always be awake, sitting by a dim lamp. November 23, 1941. Today is Sunday, we're staying put. But Sunday peace is not felt in our headquarters, the phone rings too often. Come and are sent back, constantly someone comes and goes to the battalion. Minor disturbing artillery fire is observed in the field, our sappers are working on the road. A group of scouts was captured. November 24, 1941. The offensive continues. But soon the company was forced to stop, in front of the enemy's fortified positions in the forest. We are suffering huge losses, there is no way out. The head of the company, Lt. Richter, died on the Sven Igorod, Istra Road. I am looking in desperation for the 6th company sent to help, and I meet the 11th company left without a commander and scattered. It took me a lot of work to put it in order and put it back into operation. The Stalin's organ spews its deadly song continuously over us, releasing one burst after another. One of the volleys forced us to lie down. Gradually we get used to it. As soon as we hear the rumble of volleys from afar, we immediately hear, attention, Stalin's organ, everyone is looking for shelter. The last turn hits the target. Many houses catch fire, of all the nearby wagons, only a few were saved. I managed to save a horse from a burning barn, I could not untie the second horse and left it to its fate, because at that moment the burning thatched roof fell. Heavy losses were caused by enemy actions and diseases. The combat power of our troops is weakening every day. If 14 days ago there were 70 people in the company, today there are only 40, tomorrow there will be only 35. Some start counting the days when it's their turn to die. All this in no way adds to the fighting spirit. Some of the best commanders who try to lead people forward by personal example are the first to die in their company. This fact shows how numerous losses among officers and non-commissioned officers, today about 40 people, which is 50% of all losses for the day. The new commanders, who arrived as replacements, do not know the business well and have not grown up to perform such important tasks. 
Some people are stupid and indifferent. They have no conscience, and they leave their bosses in the lurch. They use every opportunity to step back, a favorite excuse for this is to carry the wounded. The fight is still going on in the forest. I'm going back to the 6th company to deliver the order. Meanwhile, the 1st Battalion under the command of Senior Lieutenant Zech captured the settlement of Svatovo located in the rear, behind the Russian forest positions. Lieutenant Friedrich undertakes distracting attacks from the rear with insignificant forces. The 6th Company, which I finally reached, is pushing the enemy from the west. At dusk, the enemy retreats, communication with Svatovo is restored by Lieutenant Friedrich, who simultaneously delivers forward two tractors with anti-tank guns. Strong guards are placed on forest positions liberated from the enemy. At night we climb into the barn, the strong walls of which serve us as a good protection from shrapnel. The next day, persistent fighting continues, unfortunately, our losses are very high, especially among the commanders. Our people, who have been in continuous fighting since the beginning of August, are tired and overworked. The moral burden is excessive. The cry of orderly runs through the chain of soldiers like a wandering fire, and, on the contrary, the cry of forward remains unheard. All these unpleasant phenomena, which were previously unknown in our regiment, are now openly manifested and cause a lot of trouble to the command staff. We cannot answer the question why, the reserves were delivered untimely, which will replace the unit that left the battle for a while. My regimental commander made it clear to the high command already in Vyshenki that the soldiers were already at the limit of their strength. Lieutenant Richter was killed today. Lieutenant Fig, Lieutenant Seidel and Senior Lieutenant Diuterer were wounded. A brave non-commissioned officer meddler. Old reliable people are disappearing. Dear friends that's all for today it was Tim with Voice of James. I hope you like new voice and now there is no problem with understanding. If you like a video please support it with like and share your comment about the reasons for the defeat of the Germans near Moscow.